The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, final part of the trilogy made by Peter Jackson based on the Tolkien books, was nominated for 11 Oscars and won all of them. Best Picture, Best Director, Screenplay, Editing, Set Decoration, Costume Design, Makeup, Original Score, Original Song, Sound Mixing and Visual Effects. For many, it remains the high point of an already excellent trilogy. I personally keep going back and forth over the years. I used to consider Two Towers as my favorite, then Return of the King. Now I'm leaning slightly towards Fellowship. In any case, all three are pretty much flawless and remain an absolute joy to watch. Uh, the Return of the King <coughs> is an amazing cap to the trilogy, finishing all of the important arcs, resolving the main and side conflicts and ending this great saga. And what never ceases to impress me about it is, aside from the obvious stuff like a well-adapted script, fantastic performances, phenomenal music, great cinematography, is how it uses all of the more technical cinematic tools at, at its disposal. Um, the beautiful locations of New Zealand, the set decoration, the costume design, you know, with most of the stuff looking dirty or worn or actually used, the number of extras in the large battle scenes, like people and horses, the sense of scale it evokes using a combination of trick photography, miniatures and the occasional CGI. I think it's very rare that a movie is made with such an amount of passion and that that passion seeps through every aspect and every frame of the film and this is one of those rare examples. The production quality is, I think it's absolutely unmatched as far as fantasy or science fiction properties go. I mean, recently a case can be made for Dune but we'll see with the second film and you know, that production quality, it, ma it makes the film, I think, completely immune to the passage of time. because you know, it's, it still looks fantastic even 20 years on because a lot of the stuff was done practically on camera, a lot of the stuff was physical, it still exists. Uh, and even the things that should have aged by now, like obviously Gollum, uh, don't because it was such a groundbreaking visual effect at the time, again Gollum, that it remains absolutely convincing to this day. Uh, which, is a, which is kind of amazing because I, I do watch older and newer movies and you know sometimes I'll watch a film from like 2013 and it's it's visible that the CGI has aged already this is a movie from 2003 and it looks like it could have been released today seriously uh, if there were any things that I'd hold against the film it's the omission of two scenes uh, first of all the confrontation between Gandalf and the Witch King of Angmar right before the Rohirrim arrived because that is my favorite, I think probably the, the best written scene in the, in the trilogy, in the books. And then the death of Saruman. Uh, but both of those scenes are of course present in the extended edition, so I can't even seriously complain about this. Uh, there's been much debate though about the omission of another scene, which is the scouring of the Shire. That was a large part of the, the ending of the book and it's completely absent from the film. I think it's a good choice to, to remove it altogether from the adaptation. Otherwise, I mean, practically speaking, it would completely break the pacing and probably need another movie to, to even cover it. And I get that Tolkien was making a point with it, but I think that its place is in the books. And in the films, you know, we're fine with giving the heroes a much earned, happier ending. So all in all, fantastic film all around, uh, you know, great stuff at the time of its release and great stuff it remains to this day.